Namaskara, hello and welcome to the episode on food chemistry. The topic for today's presentation will be on structure and classification of proteins. The objectives are the aim of the present study module is to learn about structure, classification and nature of proteins. To begin with introduction, proteins, amino acids and peptides are important constituents of food. They supply the required building blocks for protein biosynthesis. In addition, they directly contribute to the flavor of the food and precursors for aroma compounds and colors formed during thermal or enzymatic reactions in production, processing and storage of food. Proteins play a central role in biological systems and their synthesis occurs in ribosomes. At the elemental level, proteins contain 50 to 55 percent carbon, 6 to 7 percent hydrogen, 20 to 23 percent oxygen, 12 to 19 percent nitrogen and 0.2 to 3 percent sulfur. They are highly complex polymers made up of 20 different amino acids. With this introduction, we shall study protein structures and their classification in details under the following subtopics. One is structure of proteins, primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structures, stability of proteins and denaturation. Second is classification of proteins based on chemical composition and conformation, based on structure of amino acids, based on quality, based on nutrition, based on function. Third is nature of food proteins. Fourth is protein recommendations, followed by fifth conclusion. First is structure of proteins. Proteins are complex macromolecules made up of 20 different amino acids. They are hydrolyzed to form simple substances and ultimately amino acids. These amino acids are the basic structural units of proteins. The hydrolytic process takes place during digestion by proteolytic enzymes. Proteins give rise to polypeptide, polypeptide gives rise to peptide and peptides finally yields amino acids. The general structure of amino acids is as shown on the screen. Primary structure. Amino acids as the name itself indicates contain both a basic amino group that is NH2 and an acidic carboxylic group that is COOH. The difunctionality of these two groups allows the individual amino acids to join together in long chains by forming peptide bonds. It is the bond which is formed between amino groups, it is NH2 of one amino acid to carboxylic group of COOH of another amino acid. A dipeptide bond is two amino acids joined by a peptide bond. Likewise, oligopeptide refers to a chain of 4 to 10 amino acids. The sequence formed with more than 10 amino acids is referred to as proteins or polypeptides. The end of the peptide or protein sequence with a free carboxylic group is called the carboxy terminus or C terminus and the end of free amino group is called amino terminus or N terminus. The amino acids differ in structure by the side chains. These side chains confer different chemical, physical and structural properties to the final proteins. The structure of the 20 amino acids which are commonly found in proteins are shown on the screen. Each amino acid has both a one letter and three letter abbreviation. These abbreviations are commonly used to simplify the written sequence of a peptide or protein. The amino acid sequence of a protein is encoded in DNA. Proteins are synthesized by a series of steps called transcription, that is the use of a DNA strand to make a complementary messenger RNA strand, that is mRNA, and translation, that is the mRNA sequence is used as a template to guide the synthesis of the chain of amino acids which make up the protein. While the amino acid sequence makes up the primary structure of the protein, the chemical or biological properties of the protein are dependent on the three dimensional or tertiary structure. Secondary structures. Strands of proteins or peptides have distinct 
characteristic local structure conformations or secondary structures dependent on hydrogen bonding. The two main types of secondary structures are the alpha helix and the beta sheet which is as shown on the screen. Alpha helix is a right handed coil strand. The side chain substituents of the amino acid groups in a alpha helix extend to the outside. Hydrogen bonds form between the oxygen of the C double bond O of each peptide bond in the strand and the hydrogen of the NH group of the peptide bond form amino acids below it in the helix. The hydrogen bonds make this structure specially stable. The side chain substituents of the amino acids fit in beside the NH groups. Beta sheet. The hydrogen bonding in a beta sheet is between strands that is interstrand rather than within the strands that is intrastrand. The sheet conformation consists of pairs of strands lying side by side. The carbonyl oxygens in one strand hydrogen bond with the amino hydrogens of the adjacent strand. The two strands can either be parallel or antiparallel depending on whether the strand directions that is N terminus to C terminus are the same or the opposite. The antiparallel beta sheet is more stable due to the more well aligned hydrogen bonds. Several weak interactions are very important in determining the secondary and tertiary structure of proteins. All these weak bonds are non-covalent and the main types are ionic or electrostatic bonds. These results from the attractive force between ionized groups of opposite charge. Hydrogen bonds. These results from a H plus that is proton that is shared between two neighboring electronegative atom. The H plus or the proton can be shared between nitrogen or oxygen atoms which are close to each other. Hydrophobic interactions. In this water is excluded by non-polar groups. These associate with each other so that they are not in contact with water. In globular proteins, the side chains of most of the hydrophobic amino acids that is non-polar aggregate inside the molecule and the polar that is charge groups protrude from the surface of the tertiary structure. The hydrophobic residues repel the water molecules that surround the protein thereby causing the globular structure to be more compact. Wonder wall interactions. They occur only when two atoms come very close together. The closeness of two molecules can induce charge fluctuations which may produce dipoles and mutual attraction at very short range. The next structure is tertiary structure. The overall three dimensional shape of an entire protein molecule is as shown on the figure and it is called the tertiary structure. The protein molecule will bend and twist in such a way as to achieve maximum stability or lowest energy state. Although the three dimensional shape of a protein may seem irregular and random, it is fashioned by many stabilizing forces due to bonding interactions between the side chain groups of the amino acids. Tertiary structures are stabilized by various weak molecular forces as well as by covalent linkages in the form of disulfide bonds or occasional isopeptide bonds. These are peptide linkages formed between a side chain amino group and a side chain carboxylic group. Some of the forces which determine tertiary structure are ionic bond, hydrogen bond, isopeptide bond, hydrophobic interactions and disulfide bonds. Quaternary structures. Many proteins are made up of multiple polypeptide chains often referred to as protein subunits. These subunits may be the same or different and has its own tertiary structure. The quaternary structure refers to how these protein subunits interact with each other and arrange themselves to form a larger aggregate protein complex. The final shape of the protein complex is once again stabilized by various interactions including hydrogen bonding, 
disulfide bridges and salt bridges. A protein is referred to have quaternary structure if it is composed of several polypeptide chains and are not covalently linked to one another. These chains may or may not be identical but in both cases they are linked by weak bonds. Hemoglobin was the first protein for which a complete quaternary structure was determined and its figure is as shown on the screen. Coming to the stability of proteins and denaturation. Due to the nature of weak interactions controlling the three dimensional structure, proteins are very sensitive molecules. The term native state is used to describe the protein in its most stable natural conformation. These native state can be disrupted by a number of external stress factors including high temperature, pH, removal of water, alcohol, oxidation, agitation, presence of hydrophobic surfaces and presence of metal ions etc. The loss of secondary, tertiary or quaternary structure due to exposure to a stress factor is called denaturation. Denaturation causes a protein to unfold and lose its shape. Protein functions are mainly dependent on its shape, hence denatured proteins lose their ability to function properly. In addition to becoming denatured, proteins can also form aggregates under certain stress conditions. In addition to the physical forms of protein degradation, it is also important to be aware of the possible pathways of protein chemical degradation. These include oxidation, deamidation, peptide bond hydrolysis, disulfide bond reshuffling and cross linking. The next topic is classification of proteins. There are a number of ways of classifying proteins. First is based on chemical composition and conformation and the table is as shown on the screen. The proteins characteristics and examples or occurrence. The table is as shown on the screen. Under proteins you have globular proteins, example is albumins, globulins and histones. The characteristics of albumins are soluble in water, dilute salt solutions, dilute acids and bases and they are coagulated by heat. The example are lactalbumin, egg albumin and serum albumin. The globulin proteins soluble in salt solutions, insoluble in water. Examples include serum globulin, arachin and conarkin of peanuts and myosin. Under histones, the characteristics is basic proteins soluble in most common solvents. The example is nucleoproteins, fibrous proteins or scleroproteins. Collagens, the characteristic of collagen is resistant to digestive enzymes and are insoluble. Examples include skin, tendons and bones. Under elastins, the characteristic are partially resistant to digestive enzymes. Examples include arteries, tendons and elastic tissues. The next is keratin. The characteristic is they are highly insoluble and resistant to digestive enzymes and high cysteine content. The example include skin, hair and nails. Proteins are also classified as simple proteins which yield only amino acid on hydrolysis. Example protamine, albumin, globulin etc. Conjugated proteins, these are made up of simple proteins that is apoprotein and non-protein substance known as prosthetic group. They yield not only amino acids but also other organic or inorganic compounds. Example, nucleoproteins, chromoprotein, glycoproteins, phosphoproteins, lipoproteins and metalloproteins. And the last is derived proteins. These are formed from simple and conjugated proteins and are the degradation products obtained by the actions of acid, alkalis or enzymes on proteins. Example, denatured proteins, metalloproteins, secondary proteoses, peptones, polypeptides, simple peptides 
and amino acids which are the derived proteins. The next classification of proteins is based on structure of amino acids. Proteins can be classified depending on the structure of amino acids. The side chains are the deciding factors for intra and intermolecular interactions in proteins and hence for protein properties amino acids can be classified as amino acids with non-polar uncharged side chains. Example is glycine, alanine and valine, leucine, isoleucine, proline, phenine, alanine, tryptophan and methionine. Amino acids with uncharged polar side chains. Example is serine, threonine, cysteine, tyrosine, aspergine and glutamine. Amino acids with positively charged that is basic side chains include example histidine, lysine and arginine. Amino acids with negatively charged that is acidic side chains example aspartic acid, glutamic acid etc. Amino acids can also be classified based on their R group or side group. First is acidic amino acids. These contain more carboxylic group than amino group. Example, aspartic acid and glutamic acid. Second one is basic amino acids. These contain more amino group than carboxylic group. Example is lysine, glutamine and histidine. The third one is neutral amino acids. These have equal number of amino and carboxylic group. Example is glycine alanine and serine. Fourth is aromatic amino acids that contains aromatic group or ring forms. Example is phenine alanine, tyrosine and tryptophan. The fifth one is sulfur containing amino acids. These contain sulfur. Example is methionine and cysteine. Proteins are also classified based on quality. Although both plant and animal foods contain protein, the quality of protein in these foods differ. Proteins can be divided into three types depending on the quality as complete proteins. Foods that supply all the essential amino acids in the proportions the body needs are called complete proteins or high quality proteins. Partially complete proteins. Foods that partially lack in one or more essential amino acids are referred to as partially complete proteins. Incomplete proteins. Foods that completely lack in one or more essential amino acids are called low quality proteins or incomplete proteins. Higher quality protein produces a faster growth rate. Pattern and abundance of essential amino acids relative amounts of non-essential amino acids, digestibility and presence of trypsin inhibitors affect the quality of proteins and in turn affect the growth rate. The nutritional classification of proteins is depending on the quality is as shown on the screen and the table follows as the group is complete proteins, the limiting essential amino acids are nil, examples include animal foods, red meats, eggs, poultry, fish, milk and milk products. Under partially complete proteins, the limiting amino acids are partially lack in one or more essential amino acid. Example, wheat proteins. The third group is incomplete proteins. The limiting essential amino acids completely lack in one or more essential amino acids. Example, plant foods that is grains and legumes. The next is determination of protein quality. Food proteins are composed of both essential and non-essential amino acids. Quality of protein is affected by the amino acid content, amino acid imbalance and interference of non-available carbohydrates and trypsin inhibitors and influence of heating and processing. There are different methods for evaluating quality of proteins such as chemical assays, biological assays, etc. One of the methods of evaluating the quality of protein is by experimentally determining the biological value or BV. 
The biological value measures the ability of a protein to support growth and maintenance. The biological value of a protein is defined as a percentage of the absorbed nitrogen that is EN into 6.25 which is equal to protein retained in the body. Biological value is equal to nitrogen retained in the body divided by nitrogen absorbed multiplied by 100. Protein quality is directly related to the biological value. Higher the biological value, better will be the protein nutritionally. The next classification of protein is based on nutrition. Based on the nutrition or physiological roles, amino acids can be differentiated as essential amino acids. They are the amino acids that cannot be synthesized in the body and therefore has to be supplied by the foods. Non-essential amino acids. They are the amino acids that the body can synthesize if adequate amounts of nitrogen are available in the diet. Conditional essential amino acids. Some of the non-essential amino acids may become conditionally essential if the body cannot make them because of illness or in certain circumstances where the body lacks the necessary precursors or enzymes to make them. The classified list of amino acids is as shown on the screen. Essential amino acids includes histidine, isoleucine, leucine, methionine, lysine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan and valine. Under conditional essential amino acids, they are arginine, cysteine, glycine, glutamine, proline and tyrosine. The examples coming under non-essential amino acids are alanine, arginine, aspergine, aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamic acid, glutamine, serine, glycine, proline and tyrosine. The next classification of protein is based on their function. On the functional basis, proteins can be classified according to their biological role as enzymes which include hexokinase, lactate dehydrogenase, DNA polymerase. Contractile proteins, they include myosin, actin, flagellar proteins. Storage proteins, these include casein, oval albumin, ferritin, zine. Transport proteins, they include hemoglobin, myoglobin and serum albumin. Protective proteins, these include antibodies, thrombin, complement fibrinogen, resin, hormones. These include insulin, growth hormone, etc. Structural proteins include glycoproteins, collagen, elastin, fibroion. Genetic proteins include nucleoproteins and histones. Coming to the next subtopic that is nature of food proteins. The formation of body tissue in a growing organism requires a never ending supply of amino acids for building new tissues as well as for repairing the old worn out of the existing body tissues. The protein obtained naturally in our diet includes both plant and animal sources. Proteins contribute to the structure, texture and taste of food. They are often added to foods to enhance these properties. Example, milk protein which is casein is added to the frozen desert toppings. Gelatin is added to yogurt and fillings. Protein hydrosylates are added to many foods as thickeners, stabilizers or flavor enhancers. Animal proteins. Animal derived proteins are easily digested and generally contain a mix of amino acids that is very similar to proteins found in human body that are complete protein source. They are used up more rapidly than plant proteins in our body and are considered to be more complete because they contain all essential amino acids which are needed by the body to function effectively. Animal sources of protein include meat, milk, fish, eggs, poultry and dairy products. Plant proteins. Plant sources of protein are not as easily digested 
and more than one source of pro plant protein is required in order to create an optimum amino acid profile or complete proteins. The storage proteins of cereals and pulses are the major sources of food proteins. They are divided into two groups, the reserve proteins of seeds and the functional proteins of the vegetative parts of the plants that includes leaves, stalks and roots. Plant protein foods include soya products such as soya beans, tofu, soya bean curd that are sources of high quality protein. Other foods are cereal grains, nuts, oil seeds, oats, millets, legumes which includes dried beans and peas. One of the advantages of taking in plant protein is preventing the amount of unhealthy fatty acids often found in animal protein food sources. The protein recommendations. It is recommended that 10 to 35 percent of our daily calories should come from proteins. Recommended dietary allowance that is RDA 2010 for the different age group is as shown on the screen. Recommended dietary allowances that is RDA for different age group which includes children 1 to 3 years, the grams of protein needed is 17 grams per day, children 4 to 8 years requires 20 grams of proteins per day, children in the age group of 9 to 13 years requires 14 grams of proteins per day and girls in the age group of 14 to 18 years requires 15 grams, boys in the age group of 14 to 18 years requires 54 grams of proteins per day, women in the age group of 18 plus years requires 55 grams of protein per day and men in the age group of 18 plus years require 60 grams of proteins per day. Coming to the conclusion of today's episode, proteins are complex organic compounds. The basic structure of protein is a chain of amino acids. They provide energy for the body. Proteins are important component of every cell in the body. Hair and nails are mostly made up of proteins. Our body uses protein to build and repair tissues, to make enzymes, hormones and other body chemicals. They are made up of one or more polypeptide chains folded into a characteristic three dimensional configuration. The specific configuration of a protein is required for its biological activity. Protein configuration is described in terms of four levels of organization that is primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. It is important to consider the amount, quality and balance of essential amino acids in the proteins that we ingest. The amount of protein required in the diet is inversely proportional to the amount of complete or complementary proteins that are ingested. Thank you.